در عرصه های مختلف دشمن عقبار اشرار اشرار این با توجه داشت یه اده مزدور یک اده وابسته یک اده قوباش این چنین رفتار میکنم حمله کردم به مردم با هلیکوپتر صاحب نظر نیستم این نظر نیستم من صاحب نظر نیستم لیکن اگر سران سروزه تصمیم بگیرن من حمایت میکنم In November 2019 Iranians were rocked by a tragedy that shook their society to the core In just three days under total darkness more than 1,500 peaceful protesters were slaughtered They call it Aban, Bloody November. شرکت ملی پخش فراورده های نفتی ایران به اطلاع عموم هموطنان عزیز می رساند خب، بیسه چهار آبان ماهه این هم عیدی دولت به مردمه یه خبر یهویی که بنزین قیمت آزاده شد سه هزار تومن و سهمی بندیش هزار و پونسد آبان named for the Iranian month in which the uprising took place, began in the early hours of Friday, November 15th, after the government announced a 200% increase in fuel prices. For everyday Iranians who had slipped further and further into poverty, as corrupt officials flaunted their wealth and privilege, it was the spark that was needed to reignite the anti-regime protest movement that had been ongoing since 2016. The spark ignited a flame bigger than anyone expected. At one o'clock in the morning, in the major cities of Mashhad, Ahvaz, and Shiraz, Thousands of drivers shut off their engines, blocking some of the country's most trafficked thoroughfares. It was civil disobedience on a mass scale. Aban had begun. Iranians sat on roads beside their parked cars and chatted, played cards, and shared snacks. There was a sense of camaraderie, togetherness and unity as the size of the protest grew. داریم نون پنیر درست می‌کنیم واسه تظاهر کننده هایی که سر کوچمونن چون قرار تاسب بمونن سر کوچه ببریم بهشون بودیم بخورن که گوش نمونن. As the crowd grew, the protests intensified. Protesters directed their rage at the government responsible for the inequity and indignity into which they had been forced. Nonetheless, they maintained a disciplined dedication to the principles of non-violence and civil disobedience, long advocated by leading pro-democracy voices. Soon, the calls came for nationwide protests. Iranians answered the call by the thousands. Protests spread to nearly every province, including the nation's capital, Tehran. After years of having their protests crushed, the united front that emerged in the early days of Aban gave many a sense of hope that this time would be different. They approached the police lines, handing them flowers, calling on them to join the movement. The feeling was revolutionary. Well, there's a pervasive narrative, which I am convinced is peddled in the international press by the regime itself, that the Iranian people are apathetic, that they would rather have the devil they know 
then descend into chaos like Iraq or Syria, and that there really isn't any internal opposition to the regime. And what this showed was very clearly that was a lie. As the protests continued their second day and more joined, the true demands of the protest became clear. They didn't just want the removal of the petrol price hike, they wanted the removal of the Islamic Republic. Iranians joined in the call for an end to the Islamic Republic from every ethnic group, religion, social strata, profession and province. <laughs> University students walked out of class. <laughs> Bizarre shop owners went on strike the long-awaited united front had seemingly finally taken shape. Social media, despite government censorship, was filled with calls for continued protests. The regime took notice, and on November 16th, plunged more than 80 million people into darkness. Iranians were unable to communicate and organize with one another, and were unable to share films of the protest with the world. Iran is killing perhaps thousands and thousands of people right now as we speak. That's why they cut off the internet. So they cut off the internet so people can't see what's going on. It was a decision made by one man. In kar mardom nis. In kar ashrar. Kar ashrar ine va tevajud. Hiding in his secluded secretive bunker as posters bearing his image were burned and torn down across the country. Ali Khamenei feared his regime was in danger of falling. He was right. He issued the order to his secret police and revolutionary guards to do whatever it takes to crush the protests. The number came to Reuters from sources inside Iran's government and close to the inner circle of the man at the top, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. The sources also said that Khamenei had personally ordered the crackdown to stop the protests. Quote, do whatever it takes to end it, he told his lieutenants. You have my order. Under the cover of darkness, the Islamic Republic launched a war on the Iranian people. Having lost control of some provinces to the protesters and being on the verge of losing more as the rebellion grew, the regime sent in military units. They mounted heavy machine guns to their vehicles, approached the crowds, and opened fire. Only later did the images begin to leak out. My initial reaction, obviously, you are horrified. Um, you're disgusted whenever you see those pictures and, and you're horrified uh, that a government could do that to their own people. But I really had this sense of wanting um, to make sure that the American people and that people around the world knew exactly what was going on. Really just disgust and anger. And it was the, really the true face of the Islamic Republic showing itself to the world. Seeing something on this scale, um, is 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 really is really powerful and uh, motivating at the same time. Uh, I think it became personal for many of us. Uh, we were looking at people with machine guns mowing down kids. Uh, we were looking at women lying on the street in in pools of blood. Uh, we were looking at people much like ourselves or our children. Um, saying things that we're used to hearing on the streets of the United States or any any democracy, and um, and 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 for protesters to have to pay with their lives 
uh, in such a brutal fashion was, was, really, uh, was really searing on many of us. The Islamic Republic didn't stop there. Using advanced security systems from the Chinese Communist Party and relying on infiltrators that it sent in to disrupt the peaceful protesters, the regime identified and jailed thousands of protesters. اگر آمدم را بندون درست کردم خوشبختانه اونقدر ما سیستم مونیتور داریم و دوربین داریم هم خودرو مشخص میشه هم پلاکش مشخص میشه هم رانندهش مشخص میشه Secret police raided hospitals to arrest those who were wounded by security forces and take them to undisclosed locations for torture or death Some reports indicated the regime stole bodies from hospital morgues to hide the death toll Reuters cited regime insiders who placed the total number of those murdered at 1,500. Reuters can now report that 1,500 people are thought to have died. Most organizations had previously put it in the hundreds. Later analysis indicated the number could be even higher. Among the dead were untold numbers of children. The massacre left in its wake thousands of additional victims, the families of those murdered or disappeared. But they don't see themselves as victims, their families seeking justice. One group has become a symbol of the ongoing battle for justice, the mothers of Aban. Their martyred children's values and fight have become their values and fight. So is their enemy. In the two years since Aban, the mothers of Aban, alongside fathers, sisters, brothers, grandparents and friends, have continued the fight for justice, dignity and freedom from the Islamic Republic. For them, the fight is only just beginning. <laughs> I am inspired by the people of Iran. I am inspired by their bravery. I'm inspired by their tenacity. Uh, I am inspired by their unwillingness to accept the status quo and to accept this evil regime for what it is. So my message is there is a lot of us that care about you deeply, that are standing with you in the United States. So do not give up, don't give in, keep up the fight. One day um, you will see justice. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but it's coming. I know it's coming because every dictatorship is destined for the ash heap of history. And the Iranian regime is uh, destined for exactly the same place. And that day, you will see justice for your children, for your sisters, for your brothers, for your parents. We have never forgotten you. We have never forgotten your loved ones who were killed by this regime, and we will never stop seeking justice for them. My message would be that, that there are still Americans who stand strongly with you, who, and I'm old enough to remember when Iran was a friend of the United States. That is possible. It happened in my lifetime. It is not inevitable that our countries are our enemies. And their fight has been encapsulated by the hashtag they made viral. Aban continues. مگه اینکه تمام خانواده آبان رو سرش نکنین زیر آن همون جوری که بچه همونو که به خیابون زدید ماها رو هم بزنید بکشید Be their voice Share their stories Talk about آبان Bloody November